Yeah, if, um, um, just to say that if, if, we can, if we can prove that hydrofluoric acid is being proposed here at Brockham or Horse Hill, we can actually stop that development because hydrofluoric is a banned substance. But they quite often put it in there for good measure because they haven't got to declare what they're using. And that's, that's the issue. That's why the regulation's so poor, because you haven't got to say what acid you're using. So someone has to find out on behalf of the mm. EA what they're using. Mm. This is just a handy visual slide, you know, how, how to see it. So really, those methods should be seen as fracking, right? So with matrix acidizing, even if it's down below pressure because you're dissolving the rock, so you're stimulating the uh, deformation. It is, it is a well stimulation method, so i.e. fracking. Um, the thing to mention fracking colloquially, I don't want to be held to account because it's not above matrix acidizing, it's not above fracking pressure. Um, so there, is, there are a few studies about acidization. Most of studies are about fracking. Acidization is a newer uh, technology and it's been used in California and Florida and there are some studies, um, mostly in California, but n nearly, n not nearly as many as for, for fracking. But they are showing, again, that the concerns are similar, so pollution to air, pollution to surface water, groundwater, and risk of industrial, uh, industrialization of the, of the land because you have to drill a lot of wells. Um, so also stress on water supplies because then you do need this water coming in, fresh water. Uh, just to mention as well about how this is regulated. So in California, these processes, all of them, come under the same regulation. So matrix acidizing is regulated in exactly the same way as hydraulic fracturing, high volume or low volume. Um, in Florida, they're looking to ban the whole lot, including matrix acidizing, because of the risk to the vulnerable water supplies, the aquifers. And tourism as well, of course, the other reason. Mm -hmm. The concern about tourism. tourism. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, just, just a couple of things about how it looks in California. So part of the regulations, whenever there is a stimulation up, uh, happening, the residents uh, within 500 meters from the site can ask the local water board to test their water before and after the stimulation. So this is part of the regulations. Um, just as an example. It's, it's not banned, and this is the criticism from the anti-fracking community, but you know, the fact that it's regulated the same as fracking is also telling. In the UK, on the other hand, we've got a regulatory black hole for acidization, uh, or at least for matrix acidization. The Environment Agency came out with the fact sheet that describes what these different processes are, only in January of this year, and if you look at it, it's full of statements such as, you know, close to the well bore, or a little bit further from the well bore, a little <coughs> bit of acid, or maybe a little bit more of acid. So it really doesn't say, it, it doesn't really have any meaning, well, to me at least. I mean, it's, it, it, it makes the distinction between acid wash and stimulation, but it's so vague that it's impossible <coughs> to actually um, draw any conclusions from that. And the other thing is that, in t again, back to monitoring, there is no monitoring of the volume of fluid pumped and the pressures at which it is pumped. So how you can actually monitor whether you're doing an acid wash or acid stimulation, again, I'm not quite sure how. So the council, there is no mention in the Surrey Minerals Plan about actually either acidization or fracking. These words not, are not even in the in the Surrey Minerals Plan because it's quite old now and needs to be updated, but it takes years before it is. The National Planning Practice Guidance <coughs> doesn't mention acidization, and the Oil and Gas Authority Consolidated Onshore Guidance that came out last year doesn't mention it. And this is a slide just, just to go <coughs> to the source of the problem, which is this definition in the Infrastructure Act, which defines these processes according to the volumes of fluid that are pumped. And so, the this is called associated hydraulic factoring, sorry? So there's no way of them monitoring. I mean, yeah, but also it creates a huge loophole whenever the process is below these volumes. And these are quite large. I mean, a thousand cubic meters per stage 
or 10,000 cubic meters per well. This is this is this is a lot, and in, and and a lot of the fracking in the states, I think it's 42% of gas wells and something like 90% of oil wells wouldn't qualify under this definition as fracking. In this country, but they do in that country. Yes, mm-hmm. but they are yeah. called the fracking in the states. Yeah. So, so we have this definition, which is which is just which is a major issue. So I mentioned Horsehill, Lamont, uh, the equestrian centre, which is literally mm-hmm. next door to it, and this is where there has been the only acid uh, test done in 2016. And these are quotes from you know this is all on the record. You can see this in the news. Uh, what they have experienced <coughs> there. So nosebleeds in horses and people, um, and you know, and the owner uh, is quite concerned about the business that she's been building up for decades. So this is what's new. So we have the flaring, the strata, and the process. And then in terms of planning considerations, there's a couple of other things that just to mention. Again, back to the outdated environmental permit. This is what the EA still don't know. So how much gas will be produced? Is it stimulation or not? And what is the reinjected water? Where is it coming from? Is it also coming from Litsi? Because that's supposed to change, but we don't know. So they don't know. Is what they are asking answers? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, they've been asking and, and not getting answers. Not getting answers. Yeah. And so until a new permit is in place, which again is a big question mark, the reinjection is not regulated or monitored, so we don't know how much is being reinjected or from where. And the stimulation is not regulated or monitored. So if this planning application goes through on the 8th, Technically, Angus can come in and start doing all these things, and they are not regulated or monitored. Do we know if they've got a big core water supply to the oil well side? So they've got flow? No, they, they'll, probably, they'll, probably bring, they'll probably use tankers for that. That's mm. normally what they do, because it's unlikely. I'm, to give an example, um, at Leith Hill, we stop them getting to use the village water supply, which is what they try to do, mm. for obvious reasons. We don't want them touching it. We managed to get suddenly Surrey Water to agree with us, so it's being tankered in, which then impacts on their traffic management plan, which they should have here but haven't got. Yeah. So at Leith Hill, we stopped the traffic management plan partly by stopping them using the water from the reservoir that supplied the village. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's all. You, you've got, you, you have got to stop them using local water supply, fresh water supply, yeah. for all sorts of reasons. And they will try because it's the cheapest option mm, for them. Good so, um, and also until the new permit is in place, we don't have monitoring of groundwater or air quality, and that will be required under the new permit. The simple fact that they will require groundwater monitoring is worrying in itself. And that is because of the reinjection, yeah. which is a risky uh, process. And so it's been going for 10 years without any monitoring. Mm-hmm. Another planning consideration, which is, which is very important, and then I think they are taking that into consideration. So this is a, an appraisal ap- application, but we keep hearing these statements to investors that they're going into commercial production. Brockham is the first site in the country that's going into commercial production from uh, the Kimmeridge. So, and this application is for three years, so it could be that you know it's just masquerading and basically yeah. they want to go into production. And this is the same thing that happened with the drilling of the side track. Yes. The investors knew exactly what was happening and we kept telling the council yeah. and not being heard. Traffic is going to increase from one to two tankers a week up to 12 loads a day. And then there's going to be workovers unspecified when or for how long. And during those times, the traffic is higher because they need to bring all the cranes and drill and uh, possibly rigs. And the last slide is um, just some other considerations. So obviously, they, they, they haven't done a, um, a floating uh, risk assessment, no. um, lack of trust because of the unauthorized drilling and earthquakes. So these are the things that um, can be mentioned with the, can be raised with the planning authority because if you're commenting on a planning application, it needs to be planning considerations as opposed to just, you know, for example, the extraction process, which they want really, they they want more about that. They will just discount that comment. You can say it, but... um, So is there no traffic management plan for Brockham at all? I don't think there is, no. no. So there we go, so we are Um, On on that point, just to say, the, the, the reason that's there isn't one, uh, very simply, is that Surrey County Council highways do not think it's necessary because they are reassured by the developer that there won't be much more traffic. 
That's a really weak foundation to accept. We had the same at Leith Hill and we challenged it and we proved that this is a fundamental change in traffic flow. So you might want to have a look at that one. Well. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone for listening. Uh, you know, if you would like to stay in touch uh, or contribute in any way, you know, skills, uh, whatever, just get in touch. And we also have a, a regular newsletter, so you can sign up on site. This app here is um, information about the planning application, and this is something that you can do, um, you know, immediately. Or you know, this is one of the things that you can actually do is still come into the council. Uh, this is if you just go on brockhamallwatch.org. Uh, it's linked from the front page. Are we going to make a presence at County Hall on the 8th of the 8th? As many people as possible do yeah. make a difference. Highly recommended because it does make the councillors realise yeah. there's more than one person yeah. concerned about Absolutely. it. Uh, you'll, you'll notice a difference in behaviour of councillors mm -hmm. once there's an audience that yeah. is yeah. watching yeah. what's being said yeah. and listening to what's being said. It makes a big difference. It does, yeah.